Hi, this is Chris Bailey from YouTube slash C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're going to be making some ice using procedural shaders. Let's get started. Now, don't forget to head over to cgcookie.com. We've got a ton of amazing Blender training material and resources there for you, along with some amazing Blender artists ready to answer your questions. Head over and enroll today. Okay, we are in a fresh scene. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take the default cube. We're gonna come here, click the wrench icon to get the modifiers, and we're gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier. Now, we don't want it to round things out like this. We want it to stay square. So we're gonna click simple, and that will uh, remove the rounding effect, but it will still increase the subdivisions. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because the next modifier we want to add is a displacement modifier. And this is going to create some displacement on our cube. You can see the more uh, subdivisions we have, the more detailed that displacement is going to get because it's got more polygons to work with. I'm going to click new to create a new texture and then click on this little button right here, which just brings me down the, to this tab. It's kind of just a, a shortcut hotkey to get down to this tab. And I'm going to switch from image or movie. We're going to create a clouds texture. And I'm just going to change my scale. I'll bring it way up. Now I'm going to come back to my wrench. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to turn on the strength because I don't want it to be super strong just a little bit because I'm just looking for some slight distortion. I'm also going to right click and shade smooth. And then I'm going to add in a bevel modifier. That's going to bevel out my corners. I'm going to add two segments so they're a little sharper. And you can see it's starting to look a lot like an ice cube. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go Shift A, Mesh Plane, and S to scale, and I'll bring this one up, and G and Z, just to bring this down. This will create a little bit of a floor plane for us, so that our ice looks like it's actually sitting on something. Now, one of the tricks with creating a really good ice shader is that you actually need environment. You need something to see through when you look through the ice, otherwise it doesn't really look good. So that's this is going to play uh, play into that. So let's go ahead and split our view. Come down here where you get the little crosshair, click and drag, we'll split our view. I'm going to come up here. We're going to switch this to the shader editor. Now I'm going to select my cube, go to the material tab, and I've already got a material here. I'm going to call this ice and I'm going to switch over to rendered view. And here we are looking through the render view. This is going to be with EV to start with. So what we're going to do first off is we need to make this ice cube transparent. Now to get the best result, you're going to want to use cycles, but I'll start out with Eevee so that you can see how that works in here in case you want to be using Eevee. All right. So first thing we want to do is select the principled BSDF shader node here, which is telling our shader how it's going to look. We're going to come to the options tab and right here under the blend mode. This is just for Eevee. OK, this is a special kind of like a game engine method for calculating transparency. And we're going to just switch the blend mode from opaque. We're going to go alpha hashed and shadow mode opaque. We're going to go alpha hashed as well. Then right here, it says screen space refraction. We need to turn that on because we're going to be using refraction, which is the method of, of when light rays pass through something and then get bent and bounce off in a different direction. So that's refraction. So this is going to simulate that with screen space um, uh, technology, which is the same as like screen space reflections, you know, where it uses what's in the screen space to create sort of a fake reflection solution that's a lot quicker and easier to calculate. But we also need to turn it on in the render settings. So come over to the render tab. We're going to be here. We're going to go ahead and turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. Then we come to this drop down and we also need to turn on refraction. Now we've got everything turned on in order to be see the, the result. I'm going to turn off my grid just by clicking this button here so it's a little cl clearer for us. And I'll click on my cube again to make sure I've got it selected. Then I'm going to come down to transmission. Now this is the magic number. Transmission basically means how much you can see through something or how much light transmits through it. So ice, we're going to just set the transmission to one and that will allow this object to be completely see through. Now light is passing through it and you can see it's a bit blurry, right? And that's because of the roughness. Now roughness has to do with the surface of this object. This is how rough the surface is and the rougher it is, the more it's going to scatter light. As you see, when I drag this out, it's going to diffuse those uh, those reflections and kind of make them go out. But if I go down the other way, they're going to get clearer and clearer and clearer until it's like a mirror and we can just see uh, perfect reflection, or in this case, see right through it. Now we're going to create a little bit of bump, but I also want to create some environments so we can see this ice a bit clearer. So I'm going to click up here on this drop down, and I'm going to turn off Scene World, and I'm going to use one of the built-in HDRIs that are in Blender to start with. I'm going to click this one with the nice blue sky, and I'm going to take the world opacity up to one, and that will allow it to be visible in my viewport, so I can actually see. Uh, this world behind us. Okay, so let's add some bump to this thing because we need some bumpy texture to this uh, this case cube. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go Shift A and I'm going to type in bump. 
and hit enter, grab the bump node. And then I'm also gonna add some noise. So I'm gonna type in noise and I'm gonna grab the noise texture node. I'll bring the factor into the height and the normal into the normal. That's a lot that's happening right here. If you're not familiar with the way this is working, this is creating a black and white 2D image. And then it's being piped into the bump map node, which is a very special node. And this input it's going into is the height input. You can see it's gray, matches the color of factor. That means that it's taking this black and white image and think of wherever it's, there's white on this image, it's, it's considering it to be a really high point. Wherever it's black, it's considered it to be a really low point. This node then translates those high and low points into normals. And a normal is basically the meaning of a normal is what direction a polygon face is pointing. So that's how you get all this micro displacement. It looks like there's all these little bumps, hills and valleys across the surface of our object. They don't actually exist. We don't have any geometry for this. But that's coming from this noise texture. And then the bump node is basically creating all these extra angles that these faces are facing. It's simulating geometry. If you look right here on the edge, you know, it's, it's not really actually changing the shape of our object. It's just an illusion, but it's very effective, especially when we have some displacement already on our surface like this. You can't really tell the difference. So very effective. We're going to take the distance down to 0.1 because this is a relatively small object. This pertains to the size of our grid. So each one of these grids uh, squares is a unit of one. And so we want to say the distance between the height and the depth of this, this bump is going to be really small. It's about 0.1 of the size of this grid. Now we create different types of ice just by changing the scale here of this noise, but I'm going to stick with something relatively small like this. We can also take the detail up a little bit, get some extra micro displacement in there, and we can play with the roughness as well to get a different look. All these will contribute to different types of ice. Now these are the main things you're going to need to make ice look real, but one of the things that's really helpful is to break up the roughness. Now right now we've got a really smooth roughness, but if I go ahead and grab a color ramp and drop this here and then grab my noise texture factor and plug it in to here, I can take my color and plug it into the roughness. And now we're going to have the same noise affecting the roughness of our cube once it finishes, finishes processing. So you can see now parts of this are rough and parts aren't, um, and it's based on the noise. So we can affect this to create different looks and feels. What I like to do is take the black, bring it up a little bit so it's never perfectly clear and take the white and bring it down so it's never perfectly rough. And uh, we can play with these a little bit, but I might just I might just leave it like that for now. So that's pretty good. OK, now this is looking all right, but you'll really see how it shines if we switch over into cycles. So if I switch to cycles, switch my renderer to GPU, so it's a bit faster. I'm also going to turn on denoise and I'm going to turn up my samples here as well. I'm going to go from uh, I'm just my viewport samples. I'm going to have a look at this at 3000 max samples and I'll take my noise threshold down to 0.05 maybe. I'm going to bring this one up just a little bit so that I get a little bit more see through. I'm also going to take my plane, my ground plane here, select it and click new to create a new material. And I'm just going to drop this down to a dark color. That's going to help this really kind of show up for me. I might even make it metallic. Why not? It's a metal, metal floor that this thing's standing on. Drop my roughness a little bit so it's nice and reflectant. Last thing we can do to really get some accuracy is the IOR value, which is the index of refraction. So you can look up what it is for ice or water um, and the index of refraction ice is 1.309 so we can pop that in there and that'll give us an index of refraction that's correct for uh, the actual material and there you have it we've got some ice this is a great technique for making ice in all kinds of circumstances and um, you can create a lot of variation by changing up your roughness in different points trying different scales with your noise see that looks like a very different type of ice introducing new types of noise and to create things like cracks and stuff but all of that being piped in through your bump and your roughness is going to give you really, really nice results. Also, just as a note, keep it as white. White's a really, really white ice should be. Um, if you want to get kind of a bluish color, you need to put it on a surface that's, you know, kind of blue uh, like this. There you go. I hope you found this tutorial really helpful and you are ready to go freeze everything. Enjoy making ice. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a great week. See ya.